Welcome back to the shop. Everybody who's ever watched any tool restoration videos has probably seen their fair share of uh, perfect handle screwdriver restorations. This one looks like it might say Hercules. I don't really know. It's 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 unique to me in the sense that it sort of goes from a square profile to a round profile. And as Resto Rob would say, this one is made for screwing around corners. <laughs> It's got quite a bend in there. Straightening the bend out, I, I, I'm hoping, is not going to be too big of a challenge. And the scales on this are not, they're not wobbly. They're tight. However, they don't look very good. And I think that, you know, Scout Crafter brought up a good point about, you know, the dissimilarities between wood and metal are, are many. And I guess the worst one is that the expansion and contraction rate is, is such that the handles are never going to really be perfect and you're going to end up with all sorts of problems. I have done my fair share of, of screwdriver restorations. Some this was I used quite a bit. I put new scales on this. That's held up fine. This is a, a perfect candle tire spoon or pry bar. This has been on there for better part of a, I would say, a year and a half. It's The shellac, it didn't take to it too well, but the epoxy seems to be holding it together relatively well. This I traded to Rusty, Rusty Gun, uh, well no, I, I think this was an eBay one. This was the one that I got from uh, Rusty Guy, actually. And this one I couldn't have just one, so I bought another one on eBay. And this was pretty chowdered up, so I just epoxied the handle. And, and you know, just the same, the epoxy is outstanding material these days. So, And I left this one patina and all. I just thought it was interesting. So, and while I've got examples, let's go with some extreme stuff. This is a pretty big auto wrench, and you can see that handle is busted clean off of there. And that thing is, you know, this is this is monstrous. Just to give you a comparison, it's, uh, you know, this is a 12-inch square from outside to outside. So, you know, we're looking at almost a two-foot, a two-foot long auto wrench. That'll be a different day. But going back to the the, the differences between wood and metal, I. I thought that it would be interesting to see how Delrin would hold up, or some non-wood material as a handle. And this, it happens to be one inch wide, and so does this stick of Delrin that I have here. So I think I'm going to try to take a stab at creating scales out of the Delrin. The Delrin's not not exactly cheap, uh, or at least when when I bought it. So if you buy drops, I imagine it's pretty cheap. I bought this for a particular project and and didn't follow through on it. Probably I forget. But what I'm going to do now is pry the handles off of here, try to use those as a template as best I can, and then proceed to cut this down and file fit this, and it's going to take forever. It's not going to be easy. How they fit these is it's trial and error. I, by the end of this, if I don't use this whole stick up, I'll be happy with myself. So let me go ahead and try to do that, and I'll give you some snippets along the way. Alright, so I drilled those out, and now I'm proceeding to pound these through, and then we'll, we'll and I'll proceed to pull this out, and it should make it easier to remove the scale. I struggled a little bit with that one because I didn't quite center drill this second pin, and it doesn't really matter because I got, I think, what I need out of it. I, I doubt this will be of any real great help to me, but, but I figured I'd try. So I'm going to pound the second side out of this, and, and you can see that if if I wanted to, you know, quote unquote, restore this, it and leave the scales on it, it would never, you know, truly be right because you wouldn't be able to get in there to take out all that rust. Now I'm going to continue to wire wheel inside this area. I'm not going to be too concerned about wire wheeling this because that's going to have to get hit with the belt sander. So there's, you know, it's sort of a a redundant effort if you're going to go hit this with the belt sander. Hercules! I've got it straightened back out now. I just shoved it in a hole in the workbench and pried on it and it sort of popped right back into place, which was nice. I am struggling to get the 
the rust out of these grooves here and I have the media blaster put away so I'm going to use citric acid Brian McGuire the the gentleman, him, him, Brian, and his wife were nice enough to make me a pile of shirts and hats and all sorts of neat swag with the shop, and I was able to share that with a couple of the other creators out there. So, Brian, thanks again for that, and thank you for the tip with the the citric acid. Let me give you a couple little pictures of of some of the tools we've cleaned up. So Clay has been using the citric acid to come through, and these tools were just chowder, straight rust through and through. Soaked them in citric acid, hit them with the wire wheel. In some cases, they just needed to be washed off. It is, it is not a miracle, but you know it is. It is pretty impressive uh, means of rust removal. I haven't been very scientific about it, but I just get a bowl with some water and pour some of the citric acid in it. I buy this from Amazon. I think it's twelve dollars for a five-pound bag. So I'm just gonna throw some citric acid and some warm water here. And we'll It, it's very interesting because yeah, I don't know anything about it, but on the bag it says approved for organic food, safe cleaning agent, and tough on grease. It, you typically don't. I mean, maybe vinegar is an exception, but you know, stuff that you can eat and de-rust tools with makes you makes you wonder a little bit, right? Just for illustrative purposes, I'm going to dunk a portion of this. It's a rusty old box that had some taps and dyes in it. So we'll, we'll let that reside in there for the night. And then tomorrow we'll get an idea what the difference is. Alright, we're back about 20 hours later. And this is the that box. It really is it does a nice job. So I'm going to bring this over to the to the sink. And you can see that. Hopefully you can see that. It converted all that rust to dissolved it and turned it into something else. So I'll clean this up with some just regular tap water. And then we'll proceed with our scales and the polishing and all the rest of the stuff that goes along with it. So there, there's some minor hollow spots in there, but I had sanded this down in there. The the surfaces are are more than flat enough for a for a screwdriver handle. And then the, you know I think it's going to get finished out quite a bit differently than it looks here in terms of the profile and depth and whatnot. And you can see one side is quite a bit deeper than the other. Uh, that's a function of me not cutting it straight and two having to sand it further. But but I still think that will be. Probably, probably good enough, but I'm betting I'll mess these up and we'll do this all over again. Now there's no, I have no intellectual shortcut for you on how to make scales other than trial and error. The only thing that I think I can say is that do not mix up both sides because these are not symmetrical. They look symmetrical, however they are not. If I, this side fits relatively well there, however it doesn't fit at all on this side. And it, it is not evident to my eye that, that these wouldn't be interchangeable. So be careful, try to try to keep track of what side is what. Otherwise, you, you could end up making two of the same sides, which would be a waste. Alright, I just have two little tiny pieces of brass left. That should be enough to do this. Just but budge, just barely. I'm gonna drill the first hole through here, and then I'll use that to drill through the other side once I seat it. So, so I just wasn't even thinking. I should have, I should have put down all sorts of cloths and and the like cafeteria trays or something to keep that epoxy off the bench. I just, I, so, I get so single-minded sometimes. <sighs> anyway, 
So I've got the Delrin hand grips clamped in with this cant twist and then also being held in place with a vise. Well there is the finished product with the Delrin handle, perfect handle style. It's a Hercules. I am not a sculptor and I think you need to have some sort of sculpting skills to, to get these scales to match. Some of the imperfections that you'll see there are you know, now epoxy, sort of filled that out. I, I'm not gonna say, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the way this worked out and I'm just amazed at this material. It really is outstanding stuff. It is hard to sand through, it really is. It took a long time to to go through and then I then I hit it with the buffer and and I'm not sure how how much better I could have gotten this if I came in and, and, and wet sanding this or, or whatever but I think the finish is pretty good and it's a screwdriver that's going to get worked so I'm not too concerned about it the tip I use Scout Crafters tip with using the top of the belt sander that is just such a nice that is such a handy technique to have and I've started to use it all over the place. I had some really jacked up screwdrivers and um, anyway. So that's it. You know, for comparative purposes that's what the typical wood handle would look like. Or maybe here's a larger example. No doubt this Delrin is going to be much 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 tougher in the long run. So right, that's about it. So thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing and I hope you're having a good weekend.